Okay, everyone. So today we're going to be looking at two new features that have been added to Family Tree DNA in January. So the first of these is an update to the chromosome browser. If you haven't been in the chromosome browser recently, uh, you may not have noticed this. So uh, what this is giving you is it's giving you this little symbol here. If you can remember from your matches page, this little symbol means in common with. And this very simple and very effective update is allowing you to look at your list of in common with people through your chromosome browser. So normally when we're using our chromosome browsers, we have to go in to the match page. And what we we'll have to do is we have to then uh, select people, put them into the chromosome browser and then see where we're going from there. But what this very smart addition allows you to do is go straight into the chromosome browser. And what you can do is select any one of your matches and then you can look at the matches that you share with them. Now, this is a very effective and very easy way to use the chromosome browser. And I know the chromosome browser does confuse people. So we're just going to do a little bit of revision now in how it works. So what I've done at the moment here is I have just went into the chromosome browser and you can see my name up here. And this is just a list of my DNA matches. So I've redacted the names for privacy. And this is just showing me the relationships. It's showing me the number of segments shared with those people. And it's also showing you, you the amount of shared DNA, the size of the longest block. And we have got the facility now to look at the common matches of each of these people that are matching me. So I'm just gonna show you how you would use this. And the first thing you would do is you would go in and you would select the person that you want to compare with. So you're just gonna select them. And when you select them, it adds them in to the chromosome browser. Now the chromosome browser allows you to compare up to seven people to yourself. So you've got that one person has been selected because that's the important person. That's the person that you're going to look at who matches them and who matches you. And you do that by clicking on this little two person symbol that is at the far right of their name. So if you wanted this person here, you would just select there and click on that symbol. So when you do click on that symbol, you get up an option and the option is in common with or not in common with. You will nine times out of 10 use in common with because you're wanting to see the common matches. It's the people that match both you and the person. The reason there's a not in common with is occasionally you may want to use that if you have a parent or a child tested because what it allows you to do is eliminate all the matches shared with that person and see all the people who don't match them. So you'd really only really want to do that with parent or child. So normally you're going to select in common with. And you can see here that all of your matches are in this chromosome browser. So you, at the moment, I've got 8,446 matches in my chromosome browser. If I'm looking for any particular match that I want to do a comparison with, I just put their name in there and do a search and it'll bring me up anyone's name. So it doesn't have to be somebody that's just at, at the top of your match list because that's the way they're going to appear whenever you open up your chromosome browser. It still gives you that facility to look up any particular person. Now, if some of you are familiar with doing this from the matches page, you can still do it the way that you're familiar with. But what I'm demonstrating now is how you would do it totally within the confines of the chromosome browser. So once you have selected in common with, what happens then? is you get your list of matches. And again, you're getting now all of these people that you're sharing in common with the person that you did the in common with on, if that makes sense. You can see now that I don't have all 8,000 matches here. I have 226. Now that's very useful. I've got 226 matches shared with a particular individual. 
Now, again, that's one of the advantages of using family tree DNA, because if you look at common matches on Ancestry, you will only see people who share 20 centi Morgans with each other. So that means that the in common with matches or common matches on Ancestry are vastly minimized. So even if you're an Ancestry person, uploading to Family Tree DNA and doing a comparison here allows you to see people who do match, but you're not seeing them as common matches on Ancestry. So this is why the Chromosome Browser is a very effective tool. And what you can do is add up to seven people. And what you would do is you would be looking at these seven people. Now, I'm going to just explain which ones you would choose now to add in to your chromosome browser. And one of the features of family tree DNA is that you can divide your matches into paternal and you get a little blue symbol beside them or maternal and you get a little red symbol beside them. And if they're related to you through both of your parents, you get a purple two-person symbol. So it means when you go into the chromosome browser, you already know which side of your family that particular match is aligned to. Now, that can be very, very useful. And the reason it's very, very useful is that when you use the chromosome browser, you have to be careful to make sure that you're not comparing matches on your paternal side with your maternal side. Because if you do that, it can appear that people are related to each other when they're really not. They're just matching you at the same position on the chromosome, but on different sides of the chromosome. Because you have two chromosome ones, two chromosome twos, two chromosome threes, one from your father and one from your mother. So the advantage of doing this on family tree DNA is that if you have already been able to align a lot of your matches to one side of your family, then what I would be doing here is I would be looking at the side of the family that, that the person was that I did the in common with on, if that makes sense. So because I chose someone who was on my paternal side, it meant that I am now going to be choosing people that have the little blue symbol in beside them, because I know that they are also are matching that particular side of the chromosome. And it means then that I'm going to have a more effective use of the chromosome browser. So then if I want to find out more information on these matches, I can then, you know, just write down their names. I can look at them on the matches list. I can see their trees. I can see their ancestral surnames. And all of that information is there for me. You can't get that through the chromosome browser because what it's primarily doing is it's going to identify if you all match through the same ancestors. That's what you're looking to find out here when you use the chromosome browser. So what we do is we then select the matches that we want. And that's just the way I said to you there. So when you do this, you just put a little tick in beside their name and they get automatically added to the chromosome browser here. Each person is then identified with a color. And you can, uh, uh, you can add up to seven people. So if you just want to compare with one or two, that's fine. But I've just done the maximum here just to give you an idea of how it all works. So you choose your matches. And uh, then if you want to get rid of one of these matches or you add them by mistake or you want to change or, or delete one in order to add in an additional one, all you have to do is just hover over this match. A little X will appear there. And then you can delete that person and just tick on another one. And once you've decided then uh, which ones you want to use, you just press this button here, compare relationship. And this opens up your comparison on the chromosome browser. And it looks like this. Now, this just looks like little colored blocks on a diagram to a lot of people. And this is why it's very important to know how this works. And as I said, each one of your matches is aligned a color, and you can see their names here. If I hadn't redacted them, you'd be able to see the name. So this person that's got blue, you can see they're matching me there on chromosome 14. So what you're seeing here is where they are matching me. It's all about me because we're in my chromosome browser. So you're not seeing how people are matching each other. You're seeing how everybody is matching me. 
So this is a match here that I have got with that particular person. If I click on that, I can see the size of the match. And that's what I've done down there. You can see I've just clicked on that one. And this is the type of information that you can get about that match. So you can see how many centimorgans it is in size. And that's very useful. And you see it to do two uh, decimal places on the chromosome browser. Now, I can also see that this person here in red is also matching me and this other person at the same position. That's what is useful here because you're looking for overlaps. You're looking for people to appear and match each other at the same place where they match you. And because all of these people are already aligned to my paternal side, this is giving me very strong evidence that they are related to each other in the same way that they are related to me. And that's what you're trying to do here. You're trying to group people together and you're trying to find groups of people who match each other and you at the same positions. And you might wonder why you want to do this. Well, DNA is passed on by inheritance. So somewhere back in time, you all had a common ancestor and this DNA got passed down to at least two of their children and down every generation, down to you and your match and potentially the other matches as well that you will find here. So this is a way of proving a particular line that you are related to somebody through. So I always find it's very useful to do this type of example on a match who you know how you're related to. So if you've got a third cousin and they're on family tree DNA, you can go in and do this in common with on them. Find all the other people who match them and you. Now, you already know how you're related to this third cousin. So therefore, you can then get groups of people who are related through the same ancestors. Now, down here, we've got another different example. And what you can see is that this is 28 units, more or less, in size of DNA. So you have 28 centimorgans or 27 and a half centimorgans shared of DNA. These other four people are also sharing all or part of that match. So this is very effectively grouping people together. Again, the, the blue and the red people are both matching at the same position. So that is two segments where they're both matching each other and me at the same place. Down here, we've got another match. We we'll have a match between the person on the second line and the person on the fourth line. It's maybe not as big. So what you'll be wanting to do is make assumptions based on the biggest amounts of DNA shared. So this would probably be the most attractive match to start working on. But I would also be looking at that one. And then maybe thirdly, I'd be looking at this one too. And I've only done a little picture, a part of my chromosome browser here. You know, there was other things that come up here too. And then what I could do next is I could maybe take out some of these ones. So I maybe want to remove some of these matches and add in additional people in order to compare with the other people in this chromosome browser and see if maybe they end up in this group as well. So you can start to build up that information. I would then maybe try to put this, this information into Excel, or if you don't like using Excel, then maybe put it into Word or put it even just down on paper and then look up these people on your matches list and see if you can find any connection between them. Because if you already know how you're related to the first person, you know, the person in blue, then you're looking for that line to also lead you down into the family trace of these other people. So that's how I would be using that tool to start with. So hopefully that was useful to you. So this is just some of the advantages of using the chromosome browser. It's helping you to create groups of matches who are related to you in the same way through a common ancestor. That's what I was just demonstrating to you. And the real advantage of my heritage and family tree DNA is that you're going to get lots of in common with people to compare with. It's not like ancestry where you're restricted to just a few in our common matches. A chromosome browser is giving you proof because just using common matches isn't enough because all common matches is telling you is that people are appearing on that person's match list and on yours. It's not telling you that you all match at the same place. And that's the evidence that you need to have 
if you want to be sure that you're proving a match and aligning a particular piece of DNA to a particular ancestor. So it does help you to find out how these people that you have no idea about yet, you can now align them to maybe one of your known matches and you know what part of their tree they're fitting to. Now that's very useful information. And it's the only way you're going to get that information is by looking at a chromosome browser. Also, if you want to contact these people, now you can do that through a messaging system if you're using, say, MyHeritage. But if you're using Family Tree DNA, it'll be through email, which is a very effective way of contact. And it allows you to send a more focused message. So what you can do is say, well, I think that you are related to me through this particular family line. And this may lead you to be able to give them a surname that they may recognize or a place that they may recognize. Because if you know this particular family came from the north of Ireland and you have narrowed it down to say maybe the town of Portadown, well, then maybe you will be saying, you know, do you have any ancestors from Portadown? Because the names on your trees may not match, but the connection may be one generation further back and both families may have been living in the one location. So don't forget about locations. Always remember to ask people about locations. And if you're, at, if you're sending them a more focused message, what you're doing is allowing them to, to get a question that they can easily answer. So if they recognize a name, they don't have to do an awful lot of research in the family tree. They can then come back and say, yes, I know that name. We have that name in our family. Uh, they came originally from this particular place. If you recognize a place, then again, ask them about that. And again, it's an easily answered question and it might make it more likely that you're going to get a response from your match. And really what the most important thing is, is it's knowing what line you're looking at. Because if you could look at a specific family line, it then enables you to do more genealogical research and in order to try to expand that line. And by doing that, you may find out yourself how this match is fitting into your tree. But don't forget about your paternal and maternal symbols because they are definitely clarifying any potential confusion when using the chromosome browser because they're very clearly setting out which side of your family they're aligning to. And they then would help you to uncover this common ancestor link. If you have somebody who is doubly related to you through both of your parents, they would not be an ideal person to be using the chromosome browser on. So again, bear that in mind if that is the instance. But definitely, if someone is related to you through only one side of your family, use the family matching tool on Family Tree DNA to generate your paternal and maternal symbols. And then that can be used when you are using your chromosome browser. And that can then make sure that you are doing things in a focused and informative way to get real proof out of the out of the end of the process whenever you're looking at your chromosome browser. So thanks very much for listening to that and I hope that's helped you use the family tree DNA chromosome browser.